So this is the CTF walkthrough for Sydney point two. So running InMap on this VM, I got the IP address and I see that only port 80 is open. So I went ahead and I ran NIC2 and there was something interesting found where there's some sort of bug in Apache that um, is called multi-views and what it does is it seems to reveal or divulge uh, files that um, that might be present and so I actually used that to to reveal some backup files so before I actually show you that Apache exploit I went ahead and ran derb on Kali and it came up with a lot of directories uh, basically found this Commodore 64 directory which I had also found um, by spidering the site uh, through burp suite but uh, what it revealed is that there were all these documents about um, a particular product which I wasn't sure what the product was until I started actually browsing the site um, but um, but there seemed to be a lot of interesting directories here so getting back to that Apache exploit that I saw in Nick2 I actually got that to do something uh, although it didn't actually reveal more clues, but I thought the exploit was kind of interesting. So just to show you that real fast, um, what I did is I changed the uh, Commodore 64 slash, and I just put index there at the end, and then I changed the accept type to to basically be something that didn't exist. Uh, and there's an example of this on the link. Um, that's given in the NIC2 in information as well. And so from that, what happens is you get a special header, which I'll show right here. This TNC, that's the the um, customized header, and it, it will list out any kind of files that get backed up in, in that directory. And that's basically what it uh, revealed to me, which was this uh, index.html.back. Now that file itself is actually something that you can take a look at and it has a major clue in there. Uh, you, you didn't have to look at the backup one to see this clue um, but it was interesting that I did get the exploit to work. Now in the view source of this uh, you'll find some interesting information here. It says added by Rub Hubbard. Password is the Commodore 64 sound chip lowercase. Three letters, four digits, no space. So we're given an account, some account information, but we don't even have a login anywhere. So I sort of just put this aside and then started digging into more information about Commodore 64 and what that sound chip was. Found out that it was uh, this SID 6581. Um, and so just hold that thought as we go to the next step. So if you remember back to all those directories that we found under Commodore 64, I started with the readme and that's when I realized, okay, there definitely is some software that is installed here, it's called PHP File Manager. So then it was just a question of, well, where was it installed? I looked through the installation guide, I tried a few things just poking around, that didn't work, so I had to do the brute force with burp um, to do the discover content. So basically, um, once I did that brute forcing, uh, and Burp was able to find this index.php and I got really excited because I, I knew that that was going to be the login page. So the problem is you get to the login page. I started, I just was so excited. I just tried Rob Hubbard uh, SID you know, 6581, but it didn't work. So and I tried different versions of Rob Hubbard. Um, but I wasn't getting anywhere with that, so 
I figure, okay, let me go back and start Googling some more and see if I can get a different value or something to help me because I didn't know anything about Commodore 64s. So apparently there's another term for this chip and that's MOS or MOS. So um, what I did is I wanted to try actually an enumeration of a variety of different numbers. So using Burp Intruder, um, you can set up a file to do that. So just looking at the details of what I did, um, for the payload position, I just made it those last four digits that I wanted to actually fuzz on or brute force. And then the payload is um, some digits starting with 6,500 or 6,000 or something like that, a wide range. And, um, and then what I did for the options is I actually, I actually gripped on the verbiage that I saw coming back every time I logged in unsuccessfully. It didn't actually give me an error message. It just would show me, you know, to log in again. So I'm gripping on that as kind of my indication that I didn't get in. So after that, you end up realizing that it's going to be MOS 6518. And we go ahead and log in. And now we're going to be able to upload our web shell, which would be the next step. So all you need to do is upload your web shell. I use the one that comes with Kali, the PHP reverse shell. I just modified the IP and the port number, uh, and then I uploaded it here. So we're gonna call that directly. And we just have to get netcat running. Just get netcat running on our Kali box. Invoke that, and we now have a shell on the box. And of course, our ID is stub data, so we need to start looking for what is available on the box so we can escalate our privileges. So using Got Milk's privilege escalation e escalation guide, um, what one of the things that you do is try to see what you can look at. And I tried Etsy sudoers, I couldn't see that. But I could see the cron tab, which was interesting because there's actually a, a reference in here to Sydney. When you do the uname dash A on the box, you realize that Sydney was like a code name for a version of Linux. And that this particular version has a an exploit of a double put exploit with the number um, 39772. You can look that up and Google for that and um, and find uh, find all the details on, on, on exploit DB. So when you read through the description about this kernel exploit, it actually references another uh, location, another website, and if you continue to read, you'll actually find that there's a tarball with all the files that you need, um, and it's down towards the bottom of the page, and you can download that. And of course, I just went ahead and uploaded that uh, to my targeted uh, server. So I went ahead and I uh, untarred all of that went into the directory, I compiled the, the source code, and now I'm gonna run the binary. So now when I do an ID, I've got root, great. Let's go ahead and see if we can get our flag First thing I'm going to do is take a look at Root's home directory. There's a hidden directory dot Commodore 64. Obviously that's where I want to go.
dot Miami. And Vice. So it looks like I've got a flag.zip file here, and I'm gonna need my my cracker uh, program on zip files to run against this. So one of the fun things as you do these puzzles is sometimes you get clues and they don't really add to the path that you're working on. So what I do is I just kind of set them aside and I keep them handy. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll be valuable later on. In this particular case, it looks like um, this, this was a valuable clue. Um, the, I noticed that the title on the main page when you first came to the website, the title was actually um, 38,911 bytes free. And I did some research on what that means and, and found out what it meant in Commodore 64 terms. The great news is that it also happens to be the password for that zip file. So got the flag.zip downloaded to the Kali machine, use the fcrack zip uh, against that file, and then of course that password was that hint that we saw earlier. When you unzip the file, it basically has uh, an image. And if you remember from when we were, were snooping around in the, the slash root directory of the targeted box, there was this uh, versatile Commodore emulator. Apparently that's a hint that we have to use a certain kind of emulator called Vice in order to read that image. So in order to read this image uh, C64, um, we're going to uh, need to get that Vice program. So I'm going to do a quick apt get and install that. So in addition to the apt, there's also uh, a Vice tarball that you'll need to download and install. And once you get all of that done, uh, you can go ahead and run this command, the um, x64 flag.d64, and it comes up with this really, really great old Commodore 64 screen, an emulation of that. I want to thank Nightmare for this VM. It was a lot of fun. Um, really enjoyed it and thank you for putting the time into building it.